In the east of Ethiopia is the historic city of Harar, which after Mecca, Medina and Jerusalem is regarded by Muslims as the fourth holiest city in the world. The whole of the old town is surrounded by a wall with five of the original gates that are kept shut from dusk to dawn. In the highlands of Black Africa, Harar was one of the most important trading centers of the Islamic faith. A Muslim stronghold in Christian Ethiopia. Just beyond the old town and in front of the Shoa Gate is the Christian market. With all the atmosphere of the Thousand and One Nights. Here it's mostly the women who dominate the scene, accompanied by their children and dressed in brightly colored clothing, offering their goods for sale. People coming and going amid all the hustle and bustle. Due to both tradition and religious reasons, this market is separated from those of the old city because some of the food here is prepared in a way that is prohibited to those of the Muslim faith. Harar is a window to the past. Much of the four meter high wall is still in good condition and was designed to protect the city. Hostilities by the Oromo had to be repulsed as they attempted to take advantage of religious dissension in order to invade from the south to the highlands. Strangers were forbidden to enter the city. In the middle of the 19th century, British explorer Richard Burton succeeded as the first European to access this forbidden city, disguised as an Arab merchant. Ethiopia is full of mystique. The magic of the Orient still exists in this place and its many whitewashed buildings gave it the alternative name of the White City. Today there is no hint of the former religious conflict of bygone days. Here the peaceful coexistence of religions is exemplary. Indeed UNESCO recognized it for peace, tolerance and solidarity. Time seems to stand still, even if sometimes motor vehicles cruise the narrow streets and invade like monsters from another world. Small lanes travel through the old town like a spider's web, and there's always something new to see. Framed by white buildings and a white mosque, the Muslim market is one of the two small markets within the walls of the old town. Here too, colorfully dressed women sell fruit, baskets and other goods, both day and night. From here, various narrow streets travel up a hill to the center of the old town. In one of the side streets is Rambo House, believed to be the site of the former home of the French poet. The house itself has long since been demolished and this tiny palace is owned by an Indian merchant. A splendid but bizarre construction of wood and brightly painted glass that is now a museum. With the ambience of a library. 
and photos of Harar at the turn of the 20th century. From a balcony, there's a fine view of the blue Cherche Mountains. Little is known of the life of Arthur Rambo in Ethiopia, only that he traded in weaponry, and perhaps even with people. At the tender age of 19, he completed his literary life in France and travelled through Europe, Java and Cyprus, and finally through Aden to Harar, where he managed a commercial station. A narrow valley of artisans and merchants leads up a hill to the town. Life here is both colourful and noisy. In the Ras Markunen Palace is a library and a small museum. When the Nagus of Shur, subsequently Emperor Merenik II, disempowered the last Sultan, he installed Ras Makonnen as governor of the then largest settlement in the Empire of Ethiopia. Today, numerous costumes and old books of the period are on display. Along with a good array of weaponry and kitchen utensils. From here, the father of the future emperor Haile Selassie planned to conquer the Danakil and the Ogaden. The former Ferris Megala horse market is regarded to be the centre of Harar. The palace of Menelik II was heavily damaged in the war by the Italian army. And across the road, Medani Achlam was originally an Egyptian mosque that has been transformed into a church. In Harar, the preparation of coffee is considered to be a traditional welcoming ritual by both rich and poor alike. The aroma of freshly roasted beans fills the room. Coffee is not only a beverage, but the focal point of an important social ritual for strangers and friends. Buna Dabo Nao. The city's flowering period is clearly visible on the journey to the Jamai Mosque. The original building of the Great Mosque dates back to the 12th century. The dream of Imam Gran to conquer Ethiopia is now long since gone. But Harar remains a remarkable city with a fascinating history.